Eric Holder and the Department of Justice finally dropped their prosecution against Susan Pine, a sidewalk counselor, and end up paying $120,000. I'm Matt Staver, founder and chairman of Liberty Council. Joining me is Daryl Edwards, president of Liberty Council Action. Uh, Daryl, this is a case that began actually back in 2009, we know, but it was filed in 2010 by the Department of Justice and Eric Holder. It's called Holder versus Pine, and it represents Mary Susan Pine. Susan has been a sidewalk counselor at an abortion clinic down at South Florida in West Palm Beach for about 20 years after she had an abortion herself. She has been radically changed, and she's dedicated her life to saving unborn children and protecting women from that disaster. She is a peaceful individual, doesn't break the law, but she was the brunt of a prosecution by the Department of Justice in which Eric Holder wanted her to be restrained from engaging in illegal acts, that's the words of the complaint, and fined $10,000 for allegedly violating the Freedom of Access to Clinic Entrances Law. And of course, that was eventually dismissed, and now uh, they've recently dismissed their appeal and ended up paying $120,000. Well, it seems like the illegal act is performed by the uh, attorney general to deny this woman her First Amendment rights. Um, I noticed that she's still in the business of uh, sidewalk counseling and saving the lives of children if she can. She is. And in fact, uh, what ultimately happened is when this case was filed in 2010, we said from the very beginning, this is a politically motivated case. This has nothing to do with the law. It has everything to do with the administration's pro-abortion ideology and that they were trying to silence pro-lifers. They filed suit against her and others around the country. They had no evidence. The complaint was flimsy, two and a half pages. We filed a motion to dismiss. They had to go back and redraft their complaint because they didn't even have any allegations at all. And even in their new complaint, they didn't have any real substantive allegations. We went through discovery. We filed our motion to dismiss the case for summary judgment. The federal judge, Judge Reiskamp, said, quote, The court is at a loss as to why the government chose to prosecute this particular case in the first place. The court can only wonder whether this action was the product of a concerted effort between the government and PwC. PwC is Presidential Women's Center, the abortion clinic, which began well before the date of the incident at issue to quell Ms. Pine's activities rather than to vindicate the rights of those allegedly aggrieved by Ms. Pine's conduct. That's startling that a judge says, I don't know why you would bring this in the first place. There's no evidence. It looks like you were in a conspiracy with the abortion clinic, not to protect the law, but to take away her rights to freedom of speech. Have you ever heard of a judge at any level uh, accuse the government of being in conspiracy against a uh, defendant? No, I never have. Uh, you know, I've been doing this for nearly 25 years, and I've never heard a judge do this. This is unprecedented, but it's exactly what we said at the beginning. And what we also found during this discovery is that President Obama was elected in 2008. In 2009, right after the swearing in, Early in 2009, or sometime in 2009, the Department of Justice, under Eric Holder's leadership, met with this abortion clinic. This was a year before the alleged incident took place. They met with this particular abortion clinic. We don't know exactly what they met about, but a year later, they ultimately uh, file suit, and they say that in 2009, Susan Pine violated face. It looks like the Department of Justice set this up in a concerted nationwide effort to use the FACE law, which had never been used before in Florida, to literally silence pro-lifers. And they did it in Florida and other places. So it was a concerted effort. I imagine they met with other abortion clinics and people around the country to do this as well. In 2010 then, they filed these suits around the country about the same time. In Susan's case, they said a year before that she had violated face. Well, what was the evidence that they had? All they presented was she walked across a side uh, a entrance to the a driveway to the abortion clinic. The car temporarily stopped, rolled down the window. She gave the driver literature. The driver rolled the window back up and continued on into the abortion clinic. That was it. She didn't stop it. It didn't delay. It just was a friendly encounter. 
They claim that that was a violation of face. They claim that that was an illegal act. She needs to be restrained and fined $10,000. They had surveillance on that very entrance to the abortion clinic, and amazingly, they don't have it at the time of discovery. It's gone. Uh, so they, if they had it and if they actually proved their case, you know they would have found it. Uh, we don't know for sure whether it was intentionally destroyed, but it's very suspicious. Well, what we see here is just a continuing pattern of the Obama administration just trampling the Constitution. They don't feel any restrictions to it. They they ignore the Bill of Rights as they need to, especially the free speech areas, freedom of religion areas. It's the same that they did with the Catholic hospitals uh, under Obamacare. We don't really care what your rights are here. It's what we say. And if we grant you an exception, that's out of the goodness of our heart. It's It's not binding upon us. Yeah, and so, you know, when this order came out, it, it vindicated Susan Pine. It vindicated what our position was, that they had no uh, basis in law or fact, that this was simply a politically motivated issue, and the judge chastised the attorney general and the Department of Justice for doing this. It's an awesome thing for the federal government through its highest law enforcement agency to bring a lawsuit and laser on to an individual. And when the weight of the federal government does that, you would expect – that ideology wouldn't be driving this, that pro-abortion advocacy wouldn't be behind it, that there would be real law and real facts that would support that because it's an awesome thing to have the government put a laser on you. And yet we found that there was no evidence. It was politically motivated. So on the very last day that they had to appeal the case, we got a notice of appeal. We didn't think that they were going to appeal. They had no basis to appeal. Uh, surprised by that, our attorney called the Department of Justice lawyers and said, what's going on? Who authorized this? In one word, they said Obama. Wow. Now, that is just astounding that the president of the United States would get that involved in a particular lawsuit. But again, it's part of this radical pro-abortion ideology that trumps law. And ultimately, this was appealed and on appeal – they then settled it with us for $120,000. We didn't budge at all. Uh, we knew that if we went to the oral argument, they would have another now a federal court of appeals arg uh, case saying the same thing about them, and they didn't want to do that. And ultimately, uh, the, they ended up paying $120,000 for this improper lawsuit. Is it the case that the the president, who seems to have so much on his plate or should be on his plate with the gas prices people are paying, the economy that's in shambles, that's not recovering, what drives him to get to this level? Is he just merely securing his base in an election year? Or do you think if it was not an election year, it's just his driven ideology to go to this level? I think it's both. Um, it's amazing with all that's on a president's plate the CEO of the largest nation in the world or the most powerful nation in the world, that you would get involved in micromanaging at this level. The only way you can explain it is just a commitment to radical ideology that would make someone get involved in this kind of micromanagement level. Ultimately, uh, it's just astounding. Well, I mean, is anybody really shocked? I mean, he when he was running for office, all he kept saying is he wanted to fundamentally transform America, and yet people still voted. They should have looked deeper into that. What did he mean by that? He's demonstrated clearly since he's been elected what he meant by that, which a lot of people saw ahead of time. Yeah, so this uh, the good news here is that um, Susan Pine is going to continue to do her counseling. In fact, even during the middle of this litigation a couple of months ago, she sent us an email, and in the subject line, it said everything. You don't have to say anything more. And it said, we saved a life today. And it was Susan who met a woman and a guy who came there to have an abortion. She talked to that individual, and they ended up going into the abortion clinic not knowing if they were going to actually have the abortion. They came out. Uh, they ended up saving the baby. The baby is alive, has been born, and uh, that's Susan Pine. That's what they wanted to ultimately stop. So pray for Susan and others like her around the country that are at these abortion clinics faithfully every day to ultimately save those who are going in for destruction. Go to Liberty Council's website, lc.org, and ask for my book, Take Back America. It's a reprint of a new book, updated and revised, uh, that I uh, recently released. It's called Take Back America, and it talks about the issues that are fundamental to our values in America and how we must unite 
to take back those values. Go to Liberty Council's website as well. Sign up for The Awakening 2012, Friday night, April 20, and Saturday, April 21, right there on the website in Orlando, Florida, just a few weeks away. The Awakening 2012. Go to lc.org today.